All right, all right, Rad Nation. Today we're talking about the history behind radiology and especially the physics behind radiology because that's the most fun part here at How Radiology Works. We're going from ultrasound, x-ray, nuclear medicine, CT, MR. Got some pretty cool nuggets here along the way. So for instance, how's the history of ultrasound romantically entangled with the history of nuclear medicine? Which came first, a tabletop CT system or a tabletop PET system? All the big equipment in your radiology department start now at How Radiology Works. And the first one we wanna talk about is actually the first kind of imaging that happens to most of us nowadays it's actually ultrasound. And ultrasound all starts with the discovery of the piezoelectric effect. So the piezoelectric effect is the idea that if you have this certain type of crystal and if a pressure wave hits it, it will generate a signal, an electrical signal, which can be measured. And if you turn it around, do the opposite, where you apply a voltage across that crystal, you can actually generate a pressure wave coming out from that crystal. With the same piezoelectric crystal, you can both send the wave, it will then reflect in the tissue, and then you can sense it as well. The discovery was made by Pierre Curie. Next up is x-rays. So this was actually the first imaging that allowed doctors to be able to see through the human body. And x-rays were actually discovered by accident. So Runkin was actually playing around with a cathode ray tube and cathode rays are actually electrons. They didn't know what to call them at the time. They didn't know quite all about electrons yet, but they were electrons. And they knew that the electrons, if you put a thin wrapping over the vacuum tube, you could stop the electrons. So he knew he had stopped the electrons in this experiment he was doing, and he had a screen behind him, and he was seeing differences on this screen due to the cathode ray tube. He didn't know what it was. It was actually x-rays so he called them x-rays because x is the unknown when we are typically writing down a math equation right that was the discovery of x-rays after radioactivity was discovered it's crazy to, to believe that they didn't know about radioactivity before this time but no one had actually yet observed radioactivity so it's actually observed by becquerel as well as the curies and becquerel actually did this experiment Going off some of the work of Runkin, he had these same kind of plates which could detect radioactivity and he had put them in a drawer along with a rock. And it was just by accident that he took them out, looked at them, and it turned out that they, those plates were very bright because the rock was actually releasing radioactivity. Quick turnaround, Runkin actually got the very first number one with a bullet Nobel Prize for the discovery of x-rays. Crowd goes wild. Thereafter, Becquerel, along with the Curies, received a Nobel Prize. So the first woman to receive a Nobel Prize and one of just a couple that has actually two Nobel Prizes and they're in different fields, chemistry and physics for Marie Curie. So then ultrasound was actually used for boats this was done by Landgiven in Curie's lab. That was in Pierre Curie's lab. And he actually became romantically involved later on with Marie Curie. So that was kind of scandalous at the time. And that's how the history of ultrasound was actually romantically entangled with the history of nuclear medicine. That same year, totally unbeknownst to one other, there was actually a mathematician, Rodden, who was actually working on formulas that demonstrated it was possible if you had so-called projections through an object or a shadowgram through an object that you could actually reconstruct that image from just those projections. This is actually the basis for CT image reconstruction. David Anderson then discovered the positron. So that's the P in PET scanning, positron emission tomography. Significant improvements were then made in radar, which is actually just the air version of ultrasound, where you're looking at how those waves bounce off of the planes in the sky, for instance, in order to determine the position of the airplanes. So a lot of actual development was made in the technology during the time of World War One. 
David Anderson then gets the Nobel Prize for the discovery of the positron. First demonstration of NMR nuclear magnetic resonance was done in a molecular beam. Process was actually the first digital electronic computer, and that's the basis for the majority of actual modern medical imaging, which uses a lot of computations in order to create those images. He gets the Nobel Prize for the discovery of NMR. NMR was discovered and demonstrated in solids such as paraffin wax and water. And that's gonna be the predecessor for the signal which is generated during an MRI exam. Thereafter, Purell and Bloch, which were the scientists who in separate labs discovered NMR in solids, actually were given the Nobel Prize. Anger actually invented what's called the Anger camera. It's that different from actually a modern spec system, wherein the gamma rays are coming out from the body. There's a collimator so that roughly parallel gamma rays pass through and then are detected in a scintillator. Ian Donald of Glasgow was actually the first to use ultrasound in obstetrics. This tabletop PET system was actually built and demonstrated at the Brookhaven National Lab. 1968, Sir Godfrey Hansfield actually invented the CT scanner while at EMI. He was in charge of putting this CT scanner together along with reconstruction from Alan Cormack to make the first CT images. Down below for our video on first generation CT imaging, so you can see how this geometry actually acquired parallel beam projections. X-ray CT actually led the way, and then later on, MRI came along, and actually this was the first time that an NMR signal had been used from an imaging perspective in order to make an image throughout the body, and Paul Lauterberg did this at the time applying gradients to have changes in the magnetic field such that projections through the object could be measured. 79, I'm particularly fond of that year. It's my birth year. That was the year that Cormac and Hounsfield got the Nobel Prize for CT. A couple years later, when I'm ready to graduate high school in 1998, that's the year that the first PET CT was put together at Pittsburgh by Townsend at all. 2003, Lauterberg, who demonstrated the first MRI image, and Mansfield, who demonstrated the first image of a human for MRI, were given the Nobel Prize for MRI at long last. The history behind all the major components in your radiology department, you know that there's actually been a lot of Nobel Prizes awarded for this very important work. Now that PET actually came first before CT, and that CT preceded MRI. History is super interesting. It's also really important to understand the physics behind the equipment. For that, you're definitely going to want to check out our video on photoelectric versus Compton interaction coming up now.